Hi, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome back. If you've been here before, check out the location I'm in today. Absolutely stunning. This is the Langochland Valley, and behind me is the one and only World's End. I've been down here for three times before. This is the fourth in an attempt to hike this area, and it's looking like I might just about be able to do it today. We came down here last night, there was about five or six other vans parked here as we rolled in late in the dark at about eight o'clock. We've been exploring North Wales for the past three or four days. I say we, I've got the mini me with me as well. She's been helping me out do stuff and we've had a real good giggle and a real good adventure. But I think she's gonna haul up in the crib for today. She's a little bit worn out from yesterday as I've got quite a big one planned. I'm gonna be hitting the whole entirety of the world's end. It's near 10 miles and about a five hour hike. So it should be absolutely spectacular. The weird thing is I've done it before but I wiped the memory card, so I never made an episode of it, which is why I'm back here now. Unusually, we haven't got to drive anywhere. The crib's in the spot and I can start the hike from here. So I'm gonna finish my bacon center. I'm gonna get all my gubbins together. I'm gonna to get on the trail. It's gonna be a wicked one, mate. Right, a mini mate, see you around like a donut. Oh no, better not lock her in. Wicked man, proper sight with this one. Should be pucker. 10 miles, the Dennis Brand and World's End Circular. I'm not gonna be hitting Dennis Brand, we've done it before. And there's a little spit at the top of the trail that I'm not gonna hit either. Although, I am starting it a little bit differently. I hope I can cut round to the trail from here, but should be all right. I'm on all trails again. Wicky mate, love it to bits. It's got loads of new upgrades. And again, I'm using the start where I am feature. It's wicked mate, it's like, just find a trail nearby where I am, and it will start you where you are and hook you up to the trail. Might give you an extra mile or so, depending on where you parked, obviously, but it's just wicked. It's like, you haven't necessarily always got to get the actual parking spot, because, yeah, that ain't always possible, is it, if you know. Wow, what a shot of Dennis Brown from here. Looks pretty spectacular. I love its location. Just up on that mound there, it's so cool. Definitely want to try and do a bivvy bag camp in there in the summer, you know. It's a nice little hike as well if you've not done it. Down from inland Gollan, all the way up around the backside and then coming up to the Dennis Brand. You can park down here or where I am, down here at the World's End panoramic view spot, but yeah, parking's limited. And they are sketchy roads coming up. Honestly, last night, mate, with the new crib, nightmare. We came over from Snowdonia area, late Ogwen, and drove to this spot. And I was hoping there's two ways to come in. You can come in down here and the road's pretty good, or you can come up near the Dennis Brand and it's a nightmare single track road. And it's really thin as well. I was a bit worried at points because there was rocks on the side of the road. I was worried if I couldn't get my freaking car for it. I know it sounds daft, but yeah, it's really thin and real sketchy and real steep as well. But good news, she survived. I'm not sure why all cars are female. It might be a term of endearment, I think, but yeah, she made it and she did well. She's done well on two trips now. We've done Derbyshire Dales and four days in the Wales area, so she might be ready for a Scotland trip pretty soon, you know, or at least a big one going south even. I'm not too sure. Time scale, I'd love to get back up to Scotland, man, for a sneaky bit more snow, but it's like late Feb nearly almost. I don't think we're gonna get much more snow up there for actually snowboarding. We'll have to see. Tell you what, I really do like this height. As I say, I may have mentioned, I've done this before, a few weeks ago or months ago. But this start of it, it's just so cool. It's just like this ridge, and yeah, it's just unique, this sort of area that you're strolling along. And I can say, like it is about eight and a half, nine miles long, which sounds a lot, but it's not hard work. Most of it is relatively flat. There's only a couple of up sections. So yeah, if you're thinking of doing it, I can recommend it. Nice summer's time's day. Maybe cut in the Dennis Brown as well. Wicked, mate. Da -da. Ah, 10 minutes in on the trail and the world's end sort of massive kicks in already. It's wicked, man. It's just like this massive jut of rock that just stretches for blooming miles. And the further up you get, the like, steeper and bigger it gets. And by the looks of it, there's a few decent rock climbing routes on it as well, eh? Ah, it is wicked, man. Pure stunning. Might say it a few times. The weird thing with this trail is as well, like you do get a lot of this, but then there's a lot more of it because you get up on the moors as well. So you get a different perspective later on, but ah, oh, blessed. Sunday, 
midday and we're out on a massive hike in the countryside. I don't know, for me, yeah, just feeling it, mate. Don't get much better than this. I mean, yeah, you know, but it's nice, isn't it? Peaceful, away from it all, mate. Time to myself. Loving it. Tell you what, might be a short route, but that's a decent climb, mate. You don't look much hand old, does it? It's not massive cracks to grab onto, slight little overhang. Pretty impressive. I'd like to see someone get up it. You know what? I should get back into a bit of that, man. It's been years. I used to go down a spot in uh, Leicester, in it called Beaumont Lees. They've got a sports centre down there and they've got like a rock climbing wall, but they've got three. Mate, it's wicked. We've got a proper, like, high one. Oh, I don't know, 100 foot, whatever it is. And um, then we've got like a, a small half of sort of size. And then they've got like a bouldering room. It's like a cave that you can do overhangs and it's wicked. It's a really good setup. Oh, that reminds me as well. When we did, we used to go down the rock wall because I'm not massive and I don't weigh a lot. We used to go with one of my mates and he's six foot four and he weighs like 18 stone. And when I used to belay him, we used to have to tie me, stood on the ground to the wall behind me while he was coming down because I'd end up lifting up from the ground because of his weight. I could hold him on the belay, no problem. He weren't going to fall. But yeah, because of his weight and me belaying him, I was hovering four or five foot in the air while belaying him down. Mate, if you rock climb, <laughs> you will proper get a giggle out of that one. It was pretty random. And the geezer who worked in the place had a giggle about it as well. Damn, forgot about this scrambly bit. <laughs> Got it. Nearly at the top. There's a bit of a section here, goes up and then you're up on the ridge, so uh, let's get it on. Let's not slip. Ah, not bad little spot for a view and brew, you know, you know. Mate, I'm really chuffed to be out here today on this trip. Ah, it's been busy times, so I'm not gonna lie. When I was coming back from Scotland, I had nothing come. Within two, three days of getting back from Scotland, ah, I was full of stuff to do. It's just been busy as anything since. I mean, it's great. It's what I want. It's one step closer to YouTube being a proper full-time grinding gig, you know what I mean? It's wicked, mate. But it is busy, and it can be stressful. The last couple of trips, I'll hold my hands up, were a little bit rushed to get out there and, and do it. I just, I wanted to get away, so bang, just go for the night and do something. But yeah, this trip, four days, it's been great. I nearly had to cut back. I may have mentioned it on a video a couple of episodes ago. We had a bit of a trauma with the video uploading, but I'm so glad it got sorted out and we were able to stay for a few more days. It's been good with them anyway. She was a little bit, not gonna lie, Marty and Dubious to come in and all that when we started, but as the days have gone on, she's chuffed up. Yesterday she had a proper Marty on the mountain, but we worked through it, you know? And to be honest, got to look at it, man. It's not often that you get to go away with one of your kids alone and spend quality time together, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's one in a million, man. And I got it all on video, so I'll remember it forever, mate. I'll remember it anyway, but we'll have that to look back at as well. It's good, isn't it? Quality time, man. Right, quality time alone today <laughs> on the trail. Let's keep moving. Phew. Honestly, love this trail from doing it a few weeks ago. All the way up, not all the way up, but along the way up, a good hour and a half. Got all this on the right with the box like we saw earlier, and just this stunning landscape in the backdrop. But I was thinking, you know, I should mention for the regulars to the channel, the, uh, the Channel 5 thing I mentioned a few episodes ago. If you're not, I'm not taking the channel to Channel 5 on the TV by any means or stretch of the imagination. It's just a sort of Little interview thing, um, like along the lines of the newspaper a while ago, it's probably just going to be like a three or four minute section talking about one of my episodes on like probably a 30 minute thing where there's about four or five other, other people as well I would assume, so yeah it's nothing huge but it is huge, 16,000k subscribers and possibility of being on TV for a few minutes, it won't be publicised for wondering where obviously it's TV and uh, copyright laws and all the rest of it, but uh, and it probably won't happen now I've talked about it, you know what I mean? But <laughs> fear not, the channel's going nowhere off of YouTube. But on a serious note, if that's the case, we're not expanding to national TV, then we need to keep moving with the business ideas. It was a good trip, this one. 
we managed to smash the photo shoot for the only feet, but I think we need to keep moving the brand forward. I mentioned it before, and I'm thinking again. The five-fingered furry palm gang thing. Furry palms. And I know what you're thinking, furry palms, yeah, come on. Who's got furry palms? Mate, the world's a diverse place. There's gotta be some pictures somewhere on the internet of somebody with some furry palms. <laughs> and hey, we do love a furry palm, man, like a Sasquatch, innit? You know, like the Bigfoot, but the cuddly one from the cartoon, you know what I mean, with his furry palms. Everybody loves a furry palm. Feels great, doesn't it? But yeah, I'm working on a few ideas. Not sure what yet, come in soon. You do. I'll tell you what, there's definitely a lot more colour up here than there was a few weeks ago. It's pretty cool, man. There's also a lot more of a bog fest going on. It weren't like this a few weeks ago. I don't remember getting bog fested out on trails when I was doing this. Pretty gnarly, man. It's hard work, sludging around and slipping around. <sighs> Cold and better. This is pretty awesome, though. There's absolutely no one. I've seen a few people, but nobody like up on this trail. They all seem to be cutting that little one down near the start. It's good man, there's loads of wildlife around here, all grouse or whatnot popping out of the ground. I think seeing a few pheasants. Ah, oh, mate, just me and the mountain or me and the landscape again. It's low land, isn't it? That's what it is. That's what I want to get like qualified for, man. Do the old mountain hiking and then also do the lowland stuff as well. Mix it up, you know, it'd be wicked, man. Be able to do trails with people on both sort of things. Definitely trying to get it hooked up for the summertime this year as well. Already scoping out maybe like April time to sort of hopefully set up for doing a course. It's only a week long course, so once it's done, it's done, I guess. All the background stuff you need for it, wild camping and such. Yeah, I think I've bagged all that already. And uh, if they need evidence, well, we've got videos, you know, so could be good. Could be a qualified mountain leader by the end of April, May. Imagine that. I get lost walking in a straight line sometimes. Be a nightmare. Ah, oh, wicked. Just starting to get some juts and shots at the official World's End Massive. Look how big it is. It's wicked. It comes right down. Ah, oh, I wish I'd not crossed the drone the other day. Could have flown it over there. Ah, oh, well, let's get a bit closer. Well, I didn't really get a mad shot of that proper world then, but look, this is why I love this trail. You've got all that that we've seen already, and then you come down the backside, heading back, and you've got shots down to the valley, and all this on the left side. It's a bit black out, I appreciate, but it's just mad stunning. I mean, we were up there before without this sort of rocky view down, and the moorlands, and ah, it's just wicked, mate. It's a proper good trail. And like I say, just not strenuous at all. It's a distance, but it's well worth it, mate. <sighs> what a day. What a house down there as well, eh, man? I mean, shh, there's so many in Wales. These little houses in the middle of nowhere. I mean, there's nothing. You know, this road here stretches for about four miles, I think it is. So you've got a couple of miles that way to Langochland, and then this way, oh, I don't even know, mate. Miles, nothing. You just bump out from the main town, but close enough, but far enough away this what <laughs> saying that actually i was just thinking i just bumped into somebody and had a little bit of a chat with them about parking around here because it's very limited there is a spot right up here near the world's end or the actual official bit that you can park and if you look on google maps yeah there's cars parked on that little spit when you look and i went there before and there's a big sign up saying like no parking talking to a local around here and he reckons it's owned by like <laughs> some lady who's a bit of a how can we put it? Freaking Marley ass. <laughs> I'm not gonna hold back. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's a shiznick head. And just, yeah, puts a sign up there to not allow people to park. And the worst of it is, she's got a gate next to it with a little area for like woodland. And there used to be a car parking area in there. So who knows? Seems like she might have bought the land out or something and then just stop people parking in the area. Like I say, freaking Karen. Freaking muddy ass. <laughs> Worst of it is though, now everyone's parking a little bit further up the way on the patch of like muddy land because that's the only option now. So, yeah, idyllic spot, wonderful location, possible Mardi Bummerama staying in there. Just saying, could be wrong. I'm getting that Star Wars New Hope. <laughs> you know, the bit at the start when he goes and finds Ben Kenobi or something. But no, just that bit there, man. Oh, wicked. Proper stunning though. 
Look at the sun on it as well. We're really blessed today. <sighs> it's not often you get perfect weather, is it? I mean, it could have been raining or anything. Fourth time, you know, you know. Fourth time, look at right. Blue skies all around. We've still got a few hours of sunlight, pretty cool. And da, 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 back at the crib. Let's see if the mini me's okay. Mini me! You alright? Hello. Oh my days. You look tired. You been asleep? No. Not. <laughs> Wicked mate. Right, I think what I'm gonna do is get the crib all sorted up to move and I'm going to try and drive a little bit towards Leicester and then cook up a bit of food on the way back. I've got a good one for tonight. A Korean special, don't you know? But here, let me check, show you this first. I'm intrigued what you think to the sound of the engine. Bear with. Boom time. I mean, look, you know, 15 year old car, two bags of sand. Um, I don't know how much you're going to hear on a channel on YouTube, but normally I'm guessing I've got a little squeak down here maybe that belt down there I don't know if you can see it I don't know I'm assuming because the RAC guy mentioned it I'm assuming that's the timing belt so yeah just intrigued what you think the RAC geezer said I should get that checked and possibly changed every 50,000 miles it's done 125 so I'm thinking within a few thousand miles I might get it looked at and maybe changed cut me loose for another 50k wouldn't it so yeah i mean again i don't know if you'll hear much about it but it's kind of noticeable that's what i'm thinking like when i'm driving if i open the window and i got the radio turned down like i can hear it a little bit it's not <laughs> but it's, it's noticeable as the engine's ticking over although my ears are hearing out for it you know what i mean so yeah just intrigued on your thoughts right for now oh my days check it out mate it's absolute chaos I mean, gubbins all in the front, all over the deck. It's just mental. Oh, mate, hang on a minute. Oh, we're making coffee, I think. It has been cozy, but it has been a mission. Like every time we pull up, we've got to like spend 20 minutes loading everything up into the front, putting it all together in the back. And it's just not like how I like to roll. I like to be able to get back from a hike and just get back in the crib because I'm knackered and chill and get my thing on. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be organising all the time. So, yeah, I'm thinking next trip, man probably going to be putting the, uh, the bed in here. At least getting the old bed in here and see how it fits. I want to make a new one at some point, but yeah, I, I fancy getting it in. I might have to take seats out. Right, I'm going to get the gubbins together. And we'll get on the boat. It's going to be all right. I'm going to find a wicked little spot. I've got one in mind already. Could be funky. station out it's so random it's like so small I've never ever stopped here I don't know where we are uh Dolby Southern on the bypass on the A50 or something but look really small like servo station there's a car uh, petrol station behind it and the smallest car park well oh, you're not gonna see it honestly the smallest service station I've ever seen perfect for it it's quite as bad I'm gonna get the crew set up in the back get some scrap on let's do it yeah. here's a good one then the mini me chose this i can't even freaking pronounce what it is she's been gagging to cook this one the whole trip and now she's asleep in the front so yeah she left me to destroy it in the back i'm probably going to poison her later with it but bear with let me just turn the light on because there's not much light in here has there oh no i can't can i because we took these down earlier and somebody, <coughs> mini me, must have left them near the door and somebody slammed the door, <coughs> mini me, 
and freaking cut the things in half. And the worst of it is, like, I could have probably chewed them and screwed them, like, back together or something and, and saved them with a bit of tape or something if I'd had the rest of the cable with all the other lights on, but we don't know where they are. I guess it must be somewhere up near the World's End or... I don't know, maybe there's a trail, like, stretching from Langoclan to Leicester or something, but, yeah, we ain't gone. Anyway, yeah. What is it called? Bim, bim, bop, milk it. And hopefully it says it's got everything in there, except for the jizzy chicken. Damn it. Oh, I've got to get out of the fridge. Bear with. Mmm. Boom time. Bit of chuck, man. I'm not going to lie. I think it should be beef, but, uh, yeah, we ain't got that, so it's going to be chuck. Look at the state of this thing. Oh, my days, mate. Yeah, it's like four days old. It looks about four years old, mate. It's got that lived-in look. I'm getting there already. Right, let's see what this rawdy thing says. End of the world is chuckings, you know. Oh, mate. Oh, yeah, they've got veggies and side orders and bits. Hang on a minute. I think Minnie may actually bought a bit of salad or at least, you know, some coloured stuff, veggies and that. Somewhere in here. Not entirely sure where, if I'm honest. Oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> that don't feel right. Hang on a minute. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh <laughs> Or oh, bear in mind, uh, this is from Idlow. I mean, I know the vegetables don't last very long, but we bought this about five days ago. Oh, it's got a little green bit on it as well. And not only that, but it'll go around corners. That can't be right, can it? Oh, mate, got it. <laughs> I don't know why she only bought one carrot anyway. I guess it's not going to matter now, however many she bought. It's gone, man. Just the chuck, then. Right, I'm not going to lie. This is a bit random, isn't it? Bear with. It says, and I'll quote, mix the protein with the seasoning. What kind of recipe has that on it? And then it says at one point, like, protein or mixed plant-based protein. Mate, I'm not liking sound. This sounds random. But anyway, yeah, seasoning, boil rice, stir and fry, and then eat. I don't know. Sounds pretty simple. There is, however, one problem. Seems Minnie Me didn't really read the instructions, did you? Because not only are you supposed to bring a bloody carrot, but you're also supposed to bring steak, uh, which we haven't got, uh, an onion, uh, which we haven't got, grated baby spinach, guess what, and eggs. Oh, might be able to do the egg bit. Fried, optional. So that's just shizzing it for on the top and gubbins anyway. Oh, I might actually do one of them. We'll see. Ah, crap. Hang on. He doesn't tell me how to slice and dice the meat. Oh, wait. How's the picture look? Oh, chunks. Right, we can do that. Right, hang on a minute. I don't get this. We've got rice. Yeah. We've got, oh, I don't know. I guess that's the seasoning. Yeah. That's the sauce we've got to cook it with. What the fraggletastic's that one, man? Honestly, this thing seems weird. It's almost like one of them import devices you buy on eBay or Alibaba and it comes with like a, oh, just half the instructions and most English words missing, you know what I mean? I think we're on one of them. Do you know what? I've got to do it my way. What could possibly go wrong? Gubbins are set. Destructions have been read. Let's get jizzy with it. Oh. Bear with. Feeling good about it, man. We're going international tonight. Korean style. Mixing it up, you know what I mean? 2023, baby. Bringing on the mad skills, you know now. Jamie Oliver style. No. It's the old dude, isn't it? He would have won. Floyd, man. Set the scene. Set the, uh, yeah, that that everybody followed thereafter, man. He was the original bad boy. Cook, chef, or extraordinaire in the zone. That's where we are tonight. Korean style in a service station outside Leicester. <laughs> yeah, anyway, cheesy chicken. Let's go. Not gonna lie, feeling relatively brave tonight with the chuck. Ooh, might cut that bit off. Just saying. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, on the board though. Uh, screw it. It's the last day of the trip, man. I can get this board off when I get home and just boil it and kill everything that was on it at one point. That does not look right. I ain't eating that bit. I oh, know. What are you betting? A scallops or scallops. Oh, I think I'm going to go a scallops. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Strippy bits, you know. Definitely some gunk and gnarly ass bits on there. I'm just saying. It's not like I'm wasting chicken. Don't don't think I'm throwing away good bits. 
That did all right either. I don't know what's going on with this, man. I mean, it smells right. But then my sense of smell is pretty limited, if I'm honest. But, uh, yeah, well. Alright. In with the herbs and spices or the seed. Oh, whoa, yeah, you know you want it to go everywhere. But I'm not having it today. Arr, God bloody hell, am I? Oh, crap. Yeah, I mean, that's... That seems a little bit excessive for the amount of chuck in there. I'm just going to say, throw that one out. This might be a little bit spicy. Just a thought. Like, that chuck's not even going to suck up off it, mate. Oh, dude, that smells ledge. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, damn. Look at that, man. <laughs> Wicked with my bit of sweet spot. Just a thought. Right. <sighs> rice. This isn't it's gonna take forever. Look. This special spanky do Korean rice. Gotta cook it for 25 minutes and use about three cans of gas. Bloody hell. <sighs> I don't know what's going on here. There's no instructions for the rice, although there is <laughs> additional destructions on the inside. What? Oh, I don't know, mate. This this seems too much. Do you know what I'm saying? And I've got to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that mine's not going to look like that. Good news, though. If it does taste good, which I think it might, I may cook it again. Pretty soon. Still can't find the instructions to the rice, though. I mean, how difficult can it be? Water? Boil? Nah, I think we can do it. Bear with a minute, because I've found the mad destructions for the rice. And it is. Funky Asian rice. Ah, oh, sticky rice, mate. I love that shit, isn't it? Yeah, I've got to boil it dry. And then it's just going to all stick to the pan. Oh, bugger! <laughs> it took me 20 minutes to get this thing clean last night. Damn it! <laughs> oh. Oh, that's good looking rice, though. I'm not going to lie. That looks like some serious cow homily going on there. Huh? Ah. Because you thought I was joking, didn't you? But I am the chef de Provence, mate. I know my rice, man. The old cow homily. If you're in Thailand, mate, you know everybody raves about the cow homily. I haven't got a clue what it means, where it comes from or anything, but it seems to be the one that you get served on your plate every time you eat there. So, yay! <laughs> Sticky rice. Here's the quandary, though. <sighs> Little bit of butter. Lot of butter water. I don't know. Is that a lot of bar water? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that looks loads of water. Hey. I guess it's just going to take longer to do its thing. Apparently, 12 minutes. Game on. Just going to say it. That is not cooking like normal rice. Sticky rice. Special one. Right, this is supposed to be going for 12 minutes. And I'm not going to say that it looks a little bit stuck to the pan. But it does look like it's morphed into one solid object. Which, in all honesty, oh, 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 sticky rice, mate. It's still got a bit of moisture in, man. No, I'm going for it, full guns. I'm going to let go some more. Just going to say, sometimes in life you have to make sacrifices. Uh, this rice has definitely made some sacrifices, mate. <laughs> Half of it's stuck to the bloody bottom of the pan. I don't even know what I'm doing with this. It looks all right a minute ago, and now it looks fraggled. Oh, I should have kept the bloody thing moving. Damn it. It's sticky. Very, very sticky. Uh, I don't know. I was going to take that off and uh, get it on my stage too, I think. Yeah. Oh, mate. Check it out. Freaking gas, dude. Honestly, this sucks so bad. It's not even cold tonight, man. And that is the bloody gas that's supposed to be good at low temperatures. What a load of trash. I need to buy Himalayan gas or something, man. What do they use on the mountain? It ain't this shiznick, is it? That's for shiz. It'd be bloody dead. Fair enough, though. I've probably got about eight half cans of gas down there behind the seat from the other ones that went frozen and didn't work bloody properly. Right. Oh, this is a terrible cooker, man. It never lines up. Oh, we're in. Fair enough. Let's go. Preheated. Whatever. Game on. See? She's nicked me up for the pre-eating thing. Apparently, I oh, don't believe them, but apparently onions cook at the same speed as this. So, yeah, in with the onions as well, eh? Because I found half in the fridge, along with quite a big lump of mould. We won't mention that. Well, this ain't freaking happening. Somebody's had me bloody wooden spoon, mate. I'm not impressed. That is not cool, dude. Damn it. I'm going to have to revert back to the pincers. 
Gordon Bennett. I just want to swizz it round with a wooden spoon, you know. Uh, apparently this mini packet of Uber Spice has got to go in. This is going to be minging, dude. This is why Minnie Me chose it, because she likes the spice. I'm just going to take one mouthful of this stuff and it's going to burn my face off, dude. I'll be in a lava mode. It's taking me down the royal infirmary to get me, like, demelted. Damn it. That's just stuck to one bit. That works loads. That works really well, that, doesn't it? Yeah. Definitely should have put these onions in at the same time as well. I mean, they're not going to be black by the time this chicken's not even half cooked. Great idea. What do they know, man? I should have followed my own instructions. I knew it was wrong. Gorse egg. Choking. Oh, mate. That stuff's getting right up my nose. It's one of them ones. And in my eyes. Oh, it feels like it's going to induce a sneezing attack. God, I hope not. Oh, <laughs> oh I might have to get out of the car for a minute. <laughs> Bit of one-handed Asian magic. Look at this, because this is like the top of... Ooh. Ooh. This is the top of one for it. Oh, yes. Three times a winner. I don't think any of them actually flip yet. I don't know. <laughs> Choking, dude. Right, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. I'm not going to overcook the chicken, which is probably a really bad idea because it is half mouldy and yeah, I should really be overcooking it. But whatever, we're going in. Apparently, this is barbecue. I don't know. Tastes a little bit rancid. Oh, that tastes weird. That don't taste like barbecue. Oh, it's Korean, isn't it? I don't know. And apparently, this is where we put all the gobbins in. The spinach and the carrot. So yeah, in with the sauce. Mixing, stirring, and frying at the same time. Loving it. Oh, this is going to come under the eyes and all that. You know what I mean. Hopefully not to the bottom of the pan, like it normally does. Non stick style there. In the dream. Apparently this thing's only supposed to go for one minute once I put that sauce in, but uh, yeah, I've been going about three or four, so I guess I need to plate this up. <sighs> Good luck. <laughs> and I think it's only the right thing, because this is going to be a little bit like Christmas, where we leave something for Santa, i.e. we're going to be leaving something for the pan. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, oh. oh actually, it might be a debate whether we can get 50%. <laughs> We might be giving half to the bowl, but yeah, because it's that time of year. Well, it's not, but it is. I'm using the Santa plate. I really should get an Easter one. I mean, it's coming up, isn't it? Uh, I'd probably buy one from QD or Pound Shop or something. But yeah, rice is on. It really is thicker. Could have done with more water and more time, though. Not that I'm an expert. Expert or not, I need to get that on the plate, mate. It's uh, been going about five minutes now. Only said a minute. Mate, that looks... <laughs> it tastes spicy. Oh, it looks good. It really does. Should have done it with steak. Should have had carrot and a bit of green cabbagey stuff. I'm liking this. We're doing it again. Not next time, but sometime. Thing is, though, might look good. But how does it taste? <laughs> oh, oh, it's rated as too chilly. Oh, oh, mate. Oh yeah, oh, oh that's minging, oh that's minging dude, I mean it's not minging, oh it is, bloody hell, oh it's one of them, oh, it's growing on me, oi, oh mate, oh I need rice, I need rice, oh crap, oh freaking hate spice dude, oh the bloody rice ain't cooked right, definitely need more, more water, oh, oh, gorsed, there's no way I'm cooking that again, mate. Oh, that's minging. There's no way I'm eating it. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's on the back of my throat. Oh, crap. Oh, I might scrape some of the sauce off and just eat a bit of it. Gutted. Maybe we could wake the mini me up and just feed it her. Yeah, that'll work. Got a bit of some chocolate around here somewhere. Oh, chilly. Oh. <laughs> Course it. It's that bad, I'm spitting it back out. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you're one of them chilli demons, you're probably going to love that, because that is two chillies, man. That's a strong, spicy two chilli, man. I would have said that's a 3.5 on the chillies, to be fair, but... Whew, 
Meh. It's an irrelevance because it won't be going down my throat tonight. But I do think this is going to be a good point to end this episode. It's been a wicked day, mate. I'm super, super psyched that we got to hit the world's end. I legit, I've been trying to do it and bring it to the channel for a number of times. The fourth time this time. So, wicked. And I don't want to say it. The last time I was in Langocklan, the next episode I was in Scotland. And I've just checked the weather report and it's looking like there's a load of snow coming in. I'm not going yet, but I might go in a few episodes. Just saying. As for now, I really, really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series and definitely hit me in the comments and get yourselves out there. And as always, take it easy. Enjoy the camp and stay stealthy. Big love, y'all.